Road to the Draft, the mystery of Brad Holmes. No one knows what Brad Holmes is up to. No one knows what Brad Holmes is going to pull off on the draft. I can say for the first time in a very long time, I do not know the direction of what the Detroit Lions will be doing in this draft. Now, I can tell you this from what I'm seeing and what I'm looking at right now, right before me, with Brad Holmes signing Marvin Jones. Uh, definitely uh, glad to have him back. Definitely he was very, very good when he was in Detroit. And um, he's a little bit older now, but at the same time, I still think he brings a little something to the table. And that's pretty good. Got him on a one-year deal uh, up to, uh, what, $5 million incentive-based deal. I think that that's pretty good for Marvin. And um, the way of the Detroit Lions, man, you know, on paper, we do look good and we do like we can win the North, but we still got to be able to accomplish it. We got to be able to put all of this together in 2023. Now, from what I'm looking at and, and the way I look at the draft this season is that Brad Holmes has got to walk away with some dogs, man. I mean, flood out, you know, whether you're taking Jalen Carter, whether you're taking a quarterback with the accuracy of Hendon Hooker, whether you're taking a, an elite running back such as Bijan Robinson, you must leave this draft with some elite players. Now, there's a best-kept secret quarterback out there that I really, really like. And this is besides Hendon Hooker. And that's Clayton Toon, man. Clayton Toon is my best-kept secret in this draft. He is the guy that I think that could be the next Brock Purdy in this draft. I don't know if the Lions have been watching film on this guy, but he can do it all. He's mobile in the pocket. He can extend plays with his legs he is a dual threat quarterback and he passed over 4,000 yards uh this current season and over 40 touchdowns so you do not want to overlook that as well now there is a lot of quarterbacks in this draft and a lot of people keep saying you know the notion of saying well if I can't get uh Bryce Young or if I can't get CJ Straub which you're probably not going to be able to get those guys because they're going to be probably one and two um taken in the draft unless Bryce Young slips and falls because of uh, because of his height. Other than that, Bryce Young, definitely, man, him and C.J. Stroud is, is probably the most pro-ready quarterbacks in this draft. Um, Hendon, um, Hendon Hooker, if he didn't get hurt, definitely he would be one of the top uh, quarterbacks taken in the first round, and he still could be taken in the first round because you know that there's going to be some teams out there that's going to hit the panic button. There's going to be some teams that are afraid and they're going to hit the panic button and they're going to come up to draft a quarterback. Now, a lot of people are not talking about Clayton Toon, but I think that that's the quarterback. That's the guy that I look at is the best kept secret in this draft is Clayton Toon. Out of all the other quarterbacks that I've saw, I think that Clayton Toon has the skill set to, uh, to be that guy that you build your team around in the future as well. But then when you're talking about guys like Jalen Carter and B. John Robinson, adding them to uh, to your team, you know, the Lions do need another defensive tackle, and we know the reason why, because of Levi. The Levi situation has not really worked out, and it may not work out. I don't know what's going to happen with the Levi situation. All of us are still um, walking around really wondering and pondering on what's going to happen with Levi. But in the meantime, and in the meanwhile, while uh, we're waiting on Levi, we still have to make a decision whether or not we're going to bring in a guy like uh, Jalen Carter, who has been dealing with some uh, some issues off the field. And um, we we've all been through um, some uh, some issues in our life. We've all gone through things in our life where we haven't always done the right things. We have been in um, situations where we have done things that if people knew that we done these things they probably wouldn't be our friends anymore. But because of, you know, um, we get a little bit mature, we get a little bit older, we turn around and we turn our lives around and um, we stop doing the things that are immature and we start becoming very, very mature. So I think that that's something that you have to think about when you're thinking about Jalen Carter. You got to think about having a guy on your team that is a dog, but also he got to do some growing up. 
Now, I definitely think that the Lions would still be in, in for Jalen Carter, especially when he does his interview and they talk to him and they um, pick his brain a little bit just to see where he's at and understand the player Jalen Carter is. You know, does this kid really, really love football is what's going to be the question that comes up. How is his work ethic? You know, because when you look at the uh, draft and he come in wheezing and then he come in not fully giving it everything in the uh in the uh the pro day that may make some teams um you may push some teams away and maybe that's what his uh, intentions is to push some of the teams away and he could just fall into the lap of the Detroit Lions you know Lions do need a defensive tackle they need um a linebacker as well and um and I'm thinking with the Lions would they draft a B. John Robinson? You know, I'm not saying that they that's something that they could be looking at. They may pass on Bijan and they may go after Gibbs from Alabama. They may go after uh, um a um Tajay uh Spears from um from Tulane. They may go from the the kid from um uh Texas AM, uh the David kid from Texas AM at running back. These guys that are speedy. These guys that can catch out of the backfield and they are explosive. Maybe they go in that direction. I don't know, man, but definitely, man, adding a guy like B. John Robinson to your backfield, man, would make the Detroit Lions definitely one of the most scariest teams in the league. If you had B. John Robinson and you've got to go against David Montgomery too as well, it is going to be a heck of a day for you. It's going to be a heck of a day for you, man, because B. John Robinson definitely is talented. And he's one of the running backs that can do it all, whether it's blocking, whether it's catching uh, the ball out of the backfield, lining up in the slot, going out as a receiver, period. Bijan Robinson can do it all. And if the Detroit Lions was able to get this talent on their team, it's going to make their backfield even scary. Now, there's a lot of players in this draft that can help the Detroit Lions get to where they need, especially at linebacker. I think this is a, a position that we... Uh, continue to ignore and we kind of run away from it even even a quarterback the backup quarterback spot i know a lot of people are saying okay you know we got nate sue phil so we're pretty cool so it looks like we're not going to take a quarterback or we may take a quarterback but to me the lions definitely better grab a quarterback you don't want to continue to keep going through the same things that you went through the season before where you had to double back and get a quarterback and you had to grab nate sue phil because you couldn't go on with Tim Boyle and David Blah. You don't want that same type of situation. So I definitely think that one of these uh, picks that the Lions have needs to be a quarterback, no matter what round it be in, no matter if it's the first round, second, third, if you see a guy in the fourth, whatever, you need to draft a quarterback. Two positions that I feel like the Lions have to pay attention to, and that's the linebacking spot and the, the backup quarterback spot. The quarterback spot is the most important uh, piece to this team if Jared Goff goes down and you have a guy out there that can't get the job done and can't hold the team afloat then you know that you, you don't have a good backup you know you want your backup to go out there and try to win a few games you don't want to just send anybody out there you want to send somebody out there that is more than capable of winning you games in tight situations you want the same situation that San Francisco had with Brock Purdy when when um Trey Lance went down and when Jimmy G went down, no one knew that Brock Purdy was going to perform at the level that he performed at. And that's what you want. You want your quarter, your backup quarterback to be able to come in and play with that confidence and still be able to get wins, especially when it's later in the season. Because, you know, guys get banged up. The quarterback gets banged up. The linemen get banged up. Everybody gets banged up. And, and at the end of the season, Pretty much just trying to fight off fight off all these injuries. So that's something that the Lions definitely um they gotta consider these these two spots, the linebacker spot and the quarterback spot. Now that you got another receiver in Marvin Jones, you probably can draft another receiver later in the draft um as well because he's on a one year deal. So you still can draft the wide receiver as well. And you still can take a corner, you know, even though you signed all these corners um in the offseason, you still can um and in a free agency you you brought a lot of guys in you still need to probably possibly draft another corner you know i don't care if it's a, a guy like uh deontay uh banks eli ricks 
um, Emmanuel Forbes, whoever you decide to grab, definitely, man, grab you another corner in this draft. But I think that Brad Holmes has set this draft up to be best player available. This is the first time I ever seen where the Detroit Lions can do anything that they want in the draft. I know all of us have our opinions and what we think that the Lions should do. Yeah, the Lions should grab this person. The Lions should do this. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we don't have any control of it. We can say every all the things that we want. But at the end of the day, we have no control of what Brad Holmes and this uh, scouting department is going to do in April. You have no control of it. Whether they decide to take a quarterback in the first round, second round, third round, whatever round they decide to take a quarterback in. You, we, we have no control of it. I know some players say, no, don't get this guy, don't do that. But me, how I look at players, I look at players with the opportunity to grow. All of these guys are coming to the league for a reason. And it's a lot of these guys that need work and they have to clean up things. Mostly all of these players that's coming into the NFL need some type of work. No prospect comes into the NFL and he just has everything right. No, that doesn't happen all the time. It's very rare that you have a prospect that come in and, and hit the ground running. You know, uh, guys like Sauce Gardner, as soon as they come in, they're all pro. That doesn't happen all the time. So definitely, man, I can't wait to see what Brad Holmes is going to do because it's a mystery on what Brad Holmes is doing in this draft. And I think that he's going to he's going he's going best player available in this draft throughout all the rounds. We as fans have spent a lot of times pondering and thinking, what is Brad Holmes going to do in this draft? And you really don't know the direction of what he's going to do. You don't know if he's going to take Jalen Carter at six. You don't know if he's going to take Will Anderson. You don't know if he's going to take Tyree Wilson. You don't know if he's going to go B. John Robinson. You don't know what he's going to do. You know, he could take a corner, maybe Gonzalez, maybe um, uh, Porter. You don't know. This draft is definitely open and he's, the Detroit Lions can pretty much do whatever they want to do. Now, with the addition of them picking up Marvin Jones on yesterday, now you don't know when he's going to get the receiver now. Because now it's not a rush to get a receiver anymore. Because now we have Josh Reynolds, we have Marvin Jones, we have Jamison Williams, and then we have Amin Ross St. Brown. So we pretty much got our receiver room, and I think we still have Cephas as well. So we still have a lot of receivers on this squad, and now with the addition of Marvin Jones coming back, he doesn't have to go out there and reach in the first round and grab a wide receiver now. So he can end up going with a guard. He can end up trading up, trading down, uh, trading up with the Arizona Cardinals uh, to try to come up and get a quarterback or maybe a defensive guy. Just depends on whatever he wants to do. We don't know what Brad Holmes is thinking and what he's going to do. But what I do know is that he better come away from come away with dogs in this draft. And I don't care what position it is. It has to be guys that's going to make this team uh, go to the next level. And that's to be in the playoffs. That's to be able to win the, the NFC North. You know, I'm, I'm, a lot of fans have already said that we won the North. But we look good on paper. But we still got to get the job done when we play games. And that's what we can fail to realize as fans is that we can be so hype and so energetic because the uh, um, the national news is covering us and everybody is saying that we're going to be this, this juggernaut, but we still got to get it done. We can look good on paper, but we still got to be able to go out there and win football games. And we still got to go out there and win the North. We've never won the North since we've been in the North. We've never won it. Every other team in the North has won it except the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions do have a great roster. Now they must put it together in 2023, and Brad Holmes must be the leader that steers this ship in the right direction by getting the missing pieces to the puzzle. Once he gets those missing pieces to the puzzle and um, figure this thing out, then I think the better the Detroit Lions will be in 2023. So until then, it is a mystery on knowing what Brad Holmes is going to do in the draft. But the only thing that I can say as a fan is that he better walk away with dogs. Only dogs are wanted and only dogs are allowed in Detroit. All right, you guys, make sure you uh, subscribe to the Keeping It Raw podcast. And I'm out of here until next time. Peace.